All right, guys, so I've done a quick chart. Again, you'll see straight away that it's not a linear curve. It's not a straight line. Uh, it's got more of a curve in it. So uh, I've done, plotted some real world examples. But again, this will sort of do 90% of the combos out there. Uh, again, it doesn't matter whether it's supercharged, turbocharged or, or NA. Again, the speed of sound doesn't change with density. It only changes with temperature. Uh, and this brings us into the next point. Uh, even with supercharged, we've seen some really, really great results. Uh, we've helped out uh, probably 10, 12 years ago, helping out some APSA cars and putting the longer runner lengths in supercharged cars. Again, to help that, the natural uh, inertia supercharging mechanism, because we need to remember boost in the plenum is a measurement of restriction. And with the supercharged cards, this is so easy to see because we have a direct drive mechanism, so a belt driven ratio that uh, we can keep fixed, meaning the blower supplying X amount of air per RPM. It won't change. With a turbo, uh, if we do development, the turbine speed will change but the pressure won't because the wastegates is controlling pressure, not speed of the turbo. So the turbo will just speed up if it needs more air. But with a supercharger, we can actually, you know, develop the cylinder head, develop the intake. And this is something I got into uh, over a decade ago and seen some absolutely brilliant results as we were putting runner length into uh, uh, supercharged engines while other people are calling bullshit, you know. Uh, but we're, we're harnessing that filling mechanism. And again, boost, we're just changing density. This will always say, look at engines all as forced induction. We're just changing that pressure differential. But if we optimize that filling characteristic of, as far as inertia filling, we can only reduce the boost in the planum. And this is what we ended up seeing in our supercharged intakes when we were testing them and helping a few guys out in APSA. Uh, instead of making that, you know, 1,050 with a little three inch runner, we, we were putting five and a half inches in and they were making two, uh, 1,250, so an extra 100 horsepower for the same boost. Uh, and we, we seen the same thing with some of the Holdens that we're developing. The, the more runner we put in them, the more we would lose boost. So one of the Holden tests were at 11 PSI with a, a little uh, cast manifold. I think it had like a two and a half, three inch runner. We went to a, I think around about a six inch runner, giving us about um, 11 and a half inch for the 7500. So it's pretty close to optimal third harmonic.